Hi everyone, I'm going to do another raw edit. Um, this is going to be another raw edit of a raw file from the Fronos Photo uh, Forum. So let's get into it. This is going to be uh, a portrait edit of this um, beautiful backlit, um, sort of golden hour, um, hair lit uh, shot. Wish I could take shots like this. But um, what I'm going to do with this shot is I'm going to edit it like I would any other portrait. Um, but I'm going to put a bit of extra time into uh, making sure that the skin is smooth and that sort of stuff. So it's probably going to take a bit longer than my normal uh, edit and it'll probably um, be split over a couple of different videos. So the first thing I'm going to do in this image is I notice that the white balance is a little bit off. Um, it's probably been thrown off by the uh, orange in the hair or something like that. So I'm just going to choose this area because I think it's pretty close to white. Something like that, somewhere where it gives me a nice sort of warm white balance. Obviously the, the bluer the area I select, the, the warmer the resulting spot white balance. If I select this area over here I'll get a cold white balance. If I select this area that's sort of a bit more in the shade I'll get a warmer white balance. So I like it in this particular case quite warm. Alright, so that's good. Now the next thing I normally do, so I start with my white balance, next thing I normally do is an exposure, so I'm just going to turn on the warnings here. You'll note that the hair is overexposed, but I don't really mind about that. But it means I'm not going to push the exposure up too much. I mean, I might push it a little bit. It depends, because really what I want to do is expose for, for her face here. But I don't want to blow out the hair so that it loses its beautiful sort of golden color. Um, what I might do instead is push it with the tone curve or something like that. Uh, if we look at the shadows and highlights, in this case, I, I will often use this, uh, especially in sort of landscape shots where the sky is really bright, but in this case I think it just removes a bit of life from the skin, so I'm just going to leave that off uh, for now. But what I will do is turn the warnings back on and just push up these blacks a little bit so, so that we just make the, um, as usual, if you've seen my other videos you've probably seen me doing this before just increase the richness of the colors by pushing this up. Now basically what I'm doing is I don't mind if I'm clipping off the detail in these blacks in the um, necklace here but in the eye uh, I don't want to lose any detail really so I'm just going to push it until I start to see areas that I care about being uh, losing detail. So that's probably a good place to start. Um, so now there's there's a few blemishes in the skin but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a second part probably with the GIMP to tidy up these uh, spots. So what I'll do is I'll just do the most obvious ones because the spot removal tool is really probably more suited to removing spots from uh, sensor dirt and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's essentially just like the rubber stamp tool in the GIMP or, or um, in Photoshop or whatever. It's a bit of a blunt tool. You can see that it's, you know, you can sort of see the edge of it and let's have a look here that looks pretty good um, so I'm just going to do the larger sort of areas uh, just want the want the area to be just big enough to cover whatever blemish it is and I want to pull the uh, the skin replacement skin from somewhere that's sort of a very similar color so that it just blends in perfectly, so that's pretty good as well. Uh, that's those are probably the biggest blemishes. The the rest of these I'll clean up in the GIMP. Okay, now the other thing, this is starting to look pretty good. The other thing I note though is that the eyes are pretty. Uh, this eye is in shadow. I mean, this is broad lighting, so the light's coming. I don't know, maybe it's being reflected off something to camera right, or you know, maybe there's a bright wall there, or something like that, or maybe even a reflector. But it's coming in on the side of her face that's turned towards the camera, so we're getting broad lighting. But what that means is that we've got sort of uh, a dark side of her face, and I just want to brighten up her eyes, just to... I mean, this is a gorgeous image. It's, I assume it's a uh, 24 to 105 on a 350D. This is the same as my whole camera, but uh, I never had the 24 to 105 until I upgraded. But anyway, let's 
Let's have a look at what we can do with the eyes. First thing I'll do is probably uh, make a second copy of the exposure module and I'm just going to use, you've seen me do this before, a drawn mask um, just for her eyes. Let's grab another one of these ellipses and put that there. Okay, so yep, that's looking pretty good and now I'm just going to push up the exposure just a touch. So you can see if I push this too much, obviously that looks crazy. So let's go just maybe, maybe even a little less than that. Now I'm being limited by the amount of, um, oh, I'm not full screen, I'm being limited by the amount of uh, brightness on the right hand eye because that's the bright eye obviously. So I don't want to push this so that it looks um, unnatural. And in fact, oh, I mean that looks fine. I'll probably push that just slightly less and what I'm going to do is make another copy of this and I'm going to use the probably it's going to be lips number yep so that's the one on the left and I'm just going to push that one slightly more because that's on the darker side just so that they're sort of an even brightness her two eyes but not so much that it looks unnatural. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's probably a little too much. Let's pull that back down to about 2.4 or something like that. Okay, that's starting to look good. Now, the other thing I want to do, and you'll see this done quite a bit, is just brighten up her irises a little bit. So uh, I'm going to try, I'll use the equalizer for that. Uh, so I'm going to use a drawn mask again and this time I'm going to use the um, same groups as exposure one which is both of them. You can see that in our mask manager over here we have the group from exposure one which is these two ellipses which are additive to each other. So in this case I'm just going to pull up the chroma a little so it becomes a little more contrasty. Now I'll just turn off these ellipses so that I don't have to, they don't get in the way and let's just pull that up and see what happens. You can see already that blue spot there is already quite a lot brighter. So that's way too much. Now her eyes look blue. Isn't that interesting? So let's pull that up. Yep, that's looking pretty good. I mean, of course, if I turn this off again, uh, we can go and use one of these other tools as well, like if I turn Volvia on you'll see that that has quite an altogether different sort of effect, but that could be quite nice as well. So let's just try applying the drawn mask to that as well, but you can see the, skin, the effect that it's having on the skin there. So. I would need to be a little more careful if I was going to use that. Um, so I'm just going to leave the equalizer on. I mean that's basically just sort of pushed. I mean that's too much in my opinion actually. I might reduce the mix a little. Okay. Alright that's starting to look good now. Now the other thing I was going to do was just brighten up her face in general. I mean it's pretty close um, but I'm just going to use uh, as you've probably seen me do before the tone curve for that. It's hard to find things when you're doing a view. Okay, just to brighten things up a little bit, let's have a look. And I'm just going to push the blacks. I mean, these are sort of opposed from each other in a way. But I'm just going to do that. And Okay. Alright, so let's press tab. So that's That's going to be my final image as it comes out of Darktable. Uh, my next video is going to be uh, working on this same image. Now I will say at this point that I've not sharpened this um, because I intend to do a fair bit of work on the skin in the GIMP. Um, and I'm going to use the Wavelet Decompose method for that. And I'm going to also do a bit, bit of healing on these last few spots and I just want to do the sharpening after that. So that's the reason why I haven't done the sharpening at this stage. 
Okay, thanks. See you in the next video.